Hey guys, we got Bambi TV. So today I'm checking out Jordan Peterson. Student tries to frame cancel Jordan Peterson, but gets destroyed instantly. Guys, this is gonna be an amazing video. Jordan Peterson is pretty wise. So I want to see the way he destroys them. Not destroy in that sense, but you understand, guys. Let's get straight into this. And if you're fan of Jordan Peterson, please subscribe to my channel because I release some of his content each time on my channel. So guys, hit the subscribe button and share the video, guys. Let's get started. We have to be able to say what we have to say badly or we won't be able to think at all. Hmm. Defend it? Well, okay, you- No, not well, yes. okay. But I haven't class. justified them on the basis of gender and class. As you might imagine, you've been a topic of conversation on this campus a lot in the past week or so. One of the things that sort of united people who like and dislike a lot of your ideas is that we appreciate your defense of free speech and we appreciate you coming here to talk about it with us. Uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is Professor Van Dyke addressed the distinction between you and Jonathan Haidt. And I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but I, I noticed you've, you've made a lot of more sort of substantively inflammatory claims, like in the course of this lecture you called uh, pe the authors of Facebook posts demons and totalitarians. In past events you've called them things like uh, neo-Marxists, cultural Marxists, uh, you've called them, a, I believe, a fifth column that is committing treason against the West. And it seems to me this is more than temperamental, this is a substantive difference. And, and it's another, a substantive yes, difference, and, yes. And another thing you've done is that unlike height, you have a more or sort of comprehensive political program. You've talked a lot in defense of traditional hierarchies, both of gender, of class, and so it seems that- I haven't talked about defense of traditional hierarchies in terms of gender and class, that's not true. Well, you've talked about hierarchies in society. You've talked yeah, about- Yeah, that's yes. true. I have well, done that, but I haven't class? justified them on the basis of gender and class. Well, okay, but you, you talk- Not about, okay, that's an important yes, distinction. Okay, but you, you defend hierarchies in society in a way that you talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean I yeah. defend it. Well, okay. You... No, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> Observing that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world? Well, people attack it, right? What's that? You don't. People attack it. Attack as inherently what? Attack the hierarchies of society is inherently unjust, right? Well, they are, they're unjust, yes. but they're also useful. Okay, so you, you, def you say they're useful. Some well, look, people would look, look disagree at with it that this proposition. Way. Okay, look at it this way. <laughs> You obviously think that it's worthwhile to stand up and ask a question. Yes. So you think that standing up and asking a question is better than yes. not standing up and asking a question. Yes. Okay, that's a hierarchy. Yes. Of values. Yes. Okay, without the hierarchy of values, you couldn't act. Of course. No, no, not of course. Well, wait. It's you, partly why I'm I, defending I the hierarchy. Without no a hierarchy, there's no the impetus to act. Hierarchy, right? What's that? There is a hierarchy in society, right? No, there's multiple hierarchies okay, there are in multiple society. hierarchies in society, right? Yes. And you say that they are based in, you, you invoke the lobster, right? That they are based in, uh, in nature. Yes. I said that they were inevitable. Yes, yes. that they were inevitable. Some right. people that disagree with that. That doesn't mean that they're but, good. But my point is that you have a broader point than free speech. This is one of the things you talk about, yes? Whereas I think there are some other activists who focus on more exclusively I'm not an activist. Speech. There are some other individuals who engage in public political speech. Okay. Yeah. Who, who focus more exclusively on free speech, whereas you have other goals in mind. But one of the things that your more inflammatory language and has done, I think, is, is it's politicized this free speech to an extent that someone like Haidt hasn't. I've noticed that when someone hears the term free speech now, they associate it with a specific set of thinkers, often as viewed as on the extreme right. And I think... I, I think arguably that's the problem of all factions in society because free speech should be a universal value. Polls certainly suggest that it's coming under increasing threat from both sides. But do you believe free speech is your primary end or do you believe these other points you're making are important? Because I've heard you a bunch of times defend free speech sort of contextually, like you've complained about some of the laws in Canada that you dislike, that they institutionalize false facts into the law. But it seems mm. to me that an absolutist defense of free speech makes no preference as to true or false. The point is that's something you are being forced to say something. It would be as bad as if, if you were forced to say something that is true, because the point of free speech is that you can say whatever you want, right? No, and the point of free speech is so that you can think your way through yes. life without running like but headlong being into told a brick to wall. Think position A versus position B is just as bad, right? Even if one is true and the other is not. 
It's a good job, by the way. <laughs> well, actually, wait. Can I just ask <laughs> one additional addendum? <laughs> I think the the politicization of free speech is is by far the biggest threat to free speech because this is always no the radical leftists are the biggest threat. Well, to free okay, speech. so this is. <laughs> but I, I get your as point. The professor agreed, uh, alluded to in previous questions the substantive threats to free speech in much of the world, in Europe certainly, I think in the United States as well, from the government have come from the radical right, and I think it's fair to say that on the specific narrow subset of certain departments on liberal arts colleges, it's fair to say a threat comes from the left, though its scope is in dispute, but. My question is, do you think that the way you talk about free speech, the way you link it to specific issues, the way you use inflammatory language, and the way you seem to make it, you seem to defend a specific set of free speech. There are certainly plenty of instances of free speech attacked on the other side that you don't mention as much. Do you think you risk politicizing this? Because it seems to me yes. that- Yes. Okay, and, and do you not think that's a far greater threat? Because for example, the no. NRA, well, sorry, the NRA is a group in the United States that defends guns rights, right? Okay, hold it, hold yes. it. We need a question. Yes. Okay. okay. I mean, My like I said, is, you're doing fine. Do you but think, it's just too yes. much. Like, I can't keep it do straight. Do you think that your behavior risks politicizing it? And do you think that politicization is justified? I think my behavior risks politicizing it. Yes. I would rather it not be politicized. And I'm doing what I can to manage that risk. However, it's become political in my country because the government implemented compelled speech legislation. So, I wasn't complaining about that before it became political. Now, and there, are, there is a time, even when you're detached in some sense from the political realm, that you can't be detached anymore. Well, I'm not happy with the fact that this has become politicized. You could say that I haven't done a stellar job in ensuring in every possible manner that this has remained neutrally apolitical. Probably true. You know, but I'm not particularly unhappy with the way things have gone so far. So, and I'm not happy with the radical left. And so, if they're irritated at me, so much the better, as far as I'm concerned. So, have I conducted myself perfectly? It's like, uh, undoubtedly no. So, I've got more than my fair share of faults, and a temper is one of them. But, um, I'm muddling through. Hmm. Yeah, this is actually amazing. Like, you, you see the way he answers the question. Like, I want to get to a certain point in my life where I'm able to speak like that. Like, you have been calm. Like, when a question is... When someone asks you a question and you've been calm, and answering it in a kind of certain way that the person understand your point very, very clearly is actually more than a gift. I feel you need to be not very intelligent per se, but you need to be intelligent and you need to work on yourself. Like, I feel this comes with you need to work on yourself in the sense that you need to be bold, confident about yourself. It is something I'm actually trying to work on. I pray I get to this point, guys. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and leave your thoughts on this video in the comment section, guys. Guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.